morning. Today I am going to start with chapter chemical reactions and equations. Now, why do we have this chapter in our syllabus? This is because of the reason that various chemical changes are an integral part of our day-to-day -day life. As you see that photosynthesis is taking place, fruits are ripening, various medicines are being produced in the labs. So how come how this is being done? This is just because of the chemical reactions. Now, some of the chemical reactions are advantageous and the other disadvantages. So, that is why we need to study about chemical reactions and what are the various conditions under which a chemical reaction takes place and how can we you know, control a chemical reaction if it is disadvantageous or how can we enhance a reaction if it is advantageous. For example, in your NCRT book only, it is given the example of milk kept at room temperature. So during summers, if milk is kept at room temperature, your mom may scold you. That what you did? I told you to keep it in the refrigerator. Now the thing is, why in the refrigeration? Because if it is left at room temperature, it becomes sore due to chemical reaction taking place. Hence, the science told that if the temperature is decreased, then the chemical reaction stops. So you are told to keep it in the refrigerator. Or on the other hand, if you increase the temperature, so sometimes we boil the milk. Hence, we need to study chemical reactions and equations. Then the next question comes, why to balance a chemical equation? So students, if you look at this equation, it is magnesium plus oxygen gives magnesium oxide. Now you can see that the reactants are there, two reactants but there is a single product. And magnesium atom 1, 1, O here 2 but here 1. So this is controversial because it contradicts the law of conservation of mass which you did in class 9 which states Matter can neither be created nor can it be destroyed. So, this equation is a skeletal equation. So, you need to balance it. Then only it will become an equation. Equation means left hand side is equal to right hand side. Now, how to do? So, to balance a chemical equation, there are steps which are given in the book. I am just explaining. First of all, you need to write a chemical equation in terms of correct symbol and formula. Then you, to, you have to keep the symbols in the box. Now you have to count the number of atoms of different elements on left hand side and right hand side of the equation or the reactant side and the product side. The substances which are reacting are called reactants written on left hand side and the products, the substances formed or produced during a reaction are the products. So, on counting you come to know here 2, here 1. Now how to make it 2? No, we can't write 2 here because it is very important to keep in mind that we cannot change the symbol or formula of any chemical substance. Then what to do? So we will multiply this whole with 2. So we will say that we have 2 MgO. Now if we say 2 MgO, you can see now oxygen is balanced but magnesium is unbalanced. We can't write Mg2. So we will write here 2 Mg plus O2 gives twice Mg. So this is a balanced chemical equation. Now this activity is also there in your NCRT activity 1.1. For this you have to take a magnesium ribbon. I have taken this absolutely new magnesium ribbon. So it is having a metallic luster. But if you are doing this activity, 
with another magnesium ribbon which may be exposed to air so it may be having a tarnished surface which is having a coating of magnesium oxide which hinders burning so you will have to rub it strongly with a sandpaper so as to totally remove that oxide layer and then you will switch on the burner now here i would like to tell you another thing which you should be noticing that for starting the reaction i have to heat it but once it is started we don't have to heat it that is the heat released will keep the reaction going hence it is an exothermic reaction that is during this reaction heat is produced now this is a dazzling white bright flame and as a result of its burning we are getting a white chalk like ash this is what you get the magnesium ribbon has burnt and this white ash powder charcoal like powder is being obtained so here you can also see that when do we say a chemical reaction has taken place there is either evolution of energy maybe in the form of heat or light in this case energy was released in both ways heat as well as light and the other characteristic feature is that magnesium ribbon was there in the beginning this ribbon was there it was metallic hard but after burning it has changed into a very very soft ash like substance which is magnesium oxide so now the other thing which comes to our mind is what precautions should be taken during the burning of magnesium ribbon as you have seen that lot of heat and light is being produced so this activity must not be done without the assistance of the teacher and you must wear protective glasses because the bright heat and light dazzling white flame may damage the retina now why i did not wear protective glasses because i did not directly look at the dazzling flame at all now how to make a chemical reaction more informative so to make a chemical reaction more informative we need to write the condition required that is we need to supply heat to initiate or start this reaction in this case it is this then we also need to mention here that energy is liberated so there are various ways of making a chemical equation more informative like here we can write the physical state of the reactants that is solid then gas and then gas so i am with that stick i am using both my hands for writing so here also solid then solid and then gas gas solid solid and then we show that we have to supply heat in order to make this reaction continuous now if we look at these two reactions so now we are clear that what is a chemical reaction then how why to balance a chemical reaction in order to satisfy the law of conservation of mass then how to make a chemical reaction more informative to write its physical states and to mention whether heat is required or not whether heat is being produced or heat is being utilized then there are other ways also we can also mention catalyst whether it is required or not 
or any other pressure changes. So in this way, we can make a chemical equation more informative. After this, our next topic is types of chemical reactions. First type of chemical reaction is combination. By the word combination itself, we mean that there will be combination. There will be two or more substances combining to form a single product. So my dear children, you must keep in mind that whenever you look at a reaction and you see that on the left hand side, the reactants are either two or even more. But the product is single. So you should immediately identify it as a combination reaction. One thing more I would like to tell you that combination reactions are generally exothermic. Now, if you burn a magnesium with one, heat is produced. If you burn coal, heat is produced. So, C plus O2. So, the reactants, in, reactants are two, but there is a single product. Hence, again, it is a combination reaction. Now, if you refer to your NCRP book, page number six, you have another reaction which is of combination type that is calcium oxide and this reaction is also called slating of lime. So it is calcium oxide plus water and you get CaOH whole twice. For the feet, for poor writing because you are using my left hand, if I write like this, maybe I will be able to write, I will try next time. So again we will write this is solid and this is liquid and this is aqueous. Now, 1 and 2 reactants but product is single. Hence it is a combination reaction. Now the characteristic features of this combination reaction are when you mix these two reactants it's a highly exothermic and the hissing sound is produced. Hissing sound, lot of heat and you will feel like that water is boiling and you get slaked lime. This is calcium oxide. Chemical name is quick calcium oxide and common or commercial name is quick lime. So when it is mixed with water, you get the slate lime. Again, it is the common name and calcium hydroxide is the chemical name and this reaction is used in whitewashing. So, this substance is mixed with water, you get this product and this product is applied on the walls. So, this is also exothermic, this is also exothermic, magnesium ribbon burning, again exothermic. So, combination reactions are generally exothermic. Now, the next reaction is decomposition. By decomposition, we mean that there is a single reactant. So, whenever you are given a number of equations and you are told to classify the equations depending upon their nature, whether combination or decomposition. So, you just have to focus on the number of reactants and the products and you will be able to identify. So, calcium carbonate, a white solid, it may be just chalk, it may be marble. So, chalk, marble, they are nothing but chemically calcium carbonate. When strongly heated, it decomposes to give you calcium oxide and a colorless, odorless gas, CO2 is released, which in turn turns lime water milky. So this is all for today. Next topic will be displacement and double displacement. Thank you.